Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of First, the show where I, Marcus Nez, gives you my first impressions on a game, and this here episode is all about Warstride Challenges, a fast-paced first-person shooter all about speed running your way through bite-sized challenges as fast as you can. That's why it's called Warstride Challenges and not Warstride Campaigns, because there are no traditional campaigns in this baby. Baby! Oh my god, so this is a, uh, if you couldn't already tell, because why would you? This is version 2.0 of first. I want to get this out of the way real fast, but I feel like first has gotten away from me, especially as of late, in that I always meant this show to be a quick get in, get out, never exceeding 10 minutes, just giving you my raw first impressions on a game. But lately, I've had episodes exceed 20 minutes, and I don't want that. I want, I want to speed run first. First is supposed to be a speed run show. I mean, not really, but you know what I'm saying. Anywho, that's it. That's the basic gist of it. I don't want to keep bullshitting because I'm going to get into the habit again of doing what I'm trying not to do right now. So War Stride Challenges. It is a, like I said, first person shooter all about speed running. So instead of lengthy levels or a traditional campaign, you've got a bunch of challenges that range typically 20 to 30 seconds in length. Some could go a little bit longer. They do have these extra long special levels that stitch together a handful of previous levels if you've completed enough and done a good enough job to unlock them or i think you know they just unlock as you progress and play more and earn enough medals they'll unlock and that's pretty much all there is to the game it is an early access title so there could be a lot more that's added over time they are planning to be in early access for a year and i believe it officially launched in april so there's still a lot of time to be spent working and ironing things out, adding things and all that jazz. A console version is planned as well, but at the time of this recording, there is no controller support natively, so it is a mouse and keyboard only experience that may turn some people off or make people wait. And yeah, it's, it's okay. I played it for about an hour and a half, an hour on stream, a half hour off. I definitely had more fun off stream. Not that streaming had any part in that, but when I was streaming, I was futzing around and just kind of dilly dallying. I bumped up the FOV to its max in game setting, which I think was 150, which uh, is ridiculous. It doesn't bother me. I think, you know, it could give some people a little bit of motion sickness, but I did settle on off stream 104, which I think is my new default FOV with games that allow you to adjust it. That just felt like the best compromise between a large field of view and not that disorientating fisheye lens look and, and whatnot. So, uh, yeah. But the gameplay is pretty simple in that you currently only have, I think, three weapons total in the game a pistol a shotgun and a carbine like rifle that uh all have their particular uses some are better against certain enemies whether they're big bulky enemies or more agile enemies ones that are better at taking out at a distance etc and you can slide which feels pretty good it's a pretty good slide it's not apex legend slide nothing ever will be but it's a pretty solid slide you don't have a chainsaw shin either but ignoring that pretty solid slide then a type of really long jump and the ability to slow down time for a limited amount per level it varies from level to level and you can jump in and out of slow mode as you please by pressing the right mouse clicker the right click on your little mousey mouse which is what made the game go from, uh, I don't know if I want to keep playing this too. I'm kind of enjoying this. That was really crucial in me having fun with it because what slow-mo allows you to do when you don't have that much time, it's maybe a second or two. It could be a little bit more depending on the level again. But what that allows you to do is 
maneuver your way through a level through a challenge very quickly and whenever you come across an enemy slow down time for that fraction of a second to line up your shot and take them out with one shot and make sure you hit that shot and that feels pretty good being able to jump in and out very quickly and it's really responsive it's a pretty satisfying mechanic I, I liked it quite a bit and the guns all feel pretty good the shotgun is really nice it has a nice kick and impact to it it's simple it, it does what it's supposed to do and that's really all you want from a shotgun it's got a very very good kick and you feel powerful whenever you use it you, you feel like any enemy who is in your way when you have your shotgun out is going to get fucked up and even more so than that what surprised me is how good the rifle feels the pistol's all right the pistol is just a regular pistol maybe desert eagerly but it's it's fine the rifle though also has a pretty good kick to it and in some ways i might like the rifle more because it has the long range capability you just have to be a bit more accurate with it but if you're up close and personal that shotgun's gonna get the job done the one thing i don't like about the guns is that i wish and having to manage this is probably a part of it and the challenge and just something you have to deal with but I, I just didn't want to i wish you didn't have to reload your guns or that you could reload them but if you put them away if you swap them out that they would automatically reload when they were in your ass wherever the hell you're keeping your, your damn guns that is one thing that was i, I don't know there's just something about it that I felt like I was having to reload annoyingly too much. But again, I only played it for like an hour and a half. So, I, 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 I don't know. Also, I was enjoying the game more and more the more I played. So probably if you put me in it for another hour, I'd be fine with it and I would have been used to reloading and everything there would be a-okay as well. Just like in how the levels, this is part of the whole speed running process, but... They can be a bit confusing when you're first going through them. There will be areas that have four openings, only one of which leads you to the end. And the way levels work, challenges work, is that you start at a certain point and then you have a doorway that you have to get through. And it's covered in red until you've killed all the enemies, done everything you have to do, and then it'll be green and you're good to go. And you want to reach there before the time runs out because there is a fail state in these levels. You have difficulties that change it so that enemies might be harder or there might be more of them or they might whatever but there are a handful of difficulties all of which have a fail state you can't just still earn a medal if you miss say the silver medal and then the bronze medal is just anything below silver it doesn't work that way it still requires you to beat the level in a certain amount of time you can't keep playing after that point so that you can learn a level and its layout and its enemy placement and all that jazz but you won't earn a medal or anything like that you'll just earn the knowledge of where things are which may be discouraging for some but i didn't mind it all that much so yeah i played through 18 or so challenges and when i say i played through 18 or so challenges it was the same eight levels or so all on the base difficulty, then on the hard difficulty, and a few on very hard. There are two additional difficulties above that that I think are just placeholders currently. I don't think they exist in the game just yet. Because again, it is an early access title. I think it's $20. But it's, a, it's an alright time. I think one of the things against it or a knock against it is just coming off of turbo overkill which is more my speed i'm not a huge speed runner it also doesn't have the greatest art direction it's pretty basic and doesn't do anything to stand out particularly it doesn't look bad it just kind of is there and yeah i mean the enemies are just a regular charred looking demon dude a thicker one a bug one and then i think there was one that could like fly or jump real high and shoot bullshit at you <laughs> but uh a solid game a solid speed running game the one thing i'll also say is just the fact that with the fail state and the way it plays it is very fast paced 
it requires a certain level of skill so there is a skill floor and if you are a casual first person shooter fan i don't think it's for you while again you can't play through a level even past the lowest part time and figure things out there is going to be a certain level of skill required to complete it no matter what and that is something that some people may just not be up to do and and also i mean that that's all this game is it is speed running the levels are incredibly short you're not going to get any type of regular experience or traditional campaign level experience not even something along the lines of what you would get in hey time splitters or whatever which uh would be nice it'd be nice if they had a bit more of that but it's a focused experience it knows what it's trying to deliver and it does that and more power to them uh, and it's only twenty dollars if this was like a sixty dollar game i'd have a problem with that but twenty dollars for a speed running first person shooter that's perfectly fine i'd say but uh yeah i'm looking forward to seeing how it develops as the early access period keeps going i'm very excited to see how it feels with the controller once i add that but uh yeah war stride challenges Currently PC only, coming to console in the future, I'm assuming with 1.0, but it could come to Xbox earlier in that period since there is the game preview program. But uh, if you are a fan of first person shooters, you like them fast, you enjoy speed running through levels, you like improving upon yourself and your own personal score. There's also a ghost mechanic, which is really nice. And it does a good job of helping you figure out a ideal run through each level because if you have friends playing the game you can see their ghosts and how they went through a level and that's fun but also they force you to add a fake friend in the form of patrick who will show you a pretty ideal run through a level as well if you're either not doing so well or want to figure out exactly especially early on when you're first running through a level where you need to go just follow that ghost and you'll be good to go all right i've exceeded 10 minutes but i think that's okay i, I you know work in progress i don't want to uh, this is what i will say i just don't want to get fucking close to 20 minutes ever again anywho that will do it for this episode of first once again i am marcus ness y'all can find me on twitter and pretty much everywhere at bx sausage including twitch there i'm bx sausage as well if you'd like to see me streaming games like War Stride Challenges. I forgot the name of the game for a second. I was about to call it Turbo Overkill. I'm sorry, War Stride Challenges. I didn't mean it. But if you'd like to see me streaming games like War Stride Challenges, you can do so over on twitch.tv slash pxsausage and YouTube, which is the main streaming platform, which is where you're watching this here episode, unless you're listening to the audio form. And if that's the case, that is youtube.com slash pixelated sausage. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, and all that jazz. I'm also streaming on Facebook, but fine. I'm just doing that because I can. not I'm not expecting anyone to ever watch on there. But speaking of pixelated sausage, put a dot and come after that. What do you got? You got my website. And if you go there, you'll find more stuff like this as well as the art I make. And if you see some art you like, you can purchase a print of the piece you fancy. And if you fancy the site in general and anything that we do, please go over to patreon.com slash pxs and support us that way. As always, thank you for watching or listening. I hope you enjoyed this here episode and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Bye! Ha, ha, ha.